Hi, welcome back to Waxing On Wednesday. Classic rock, and this kind of fits in rock. It's kind of folk rock. We're going to look at another one of my firsts, my first Bob Dylan album. Now, I've always mentioned on the show here, if you don't know an artist, you want to get the, you know, good feel of what they do, Greatest Hits, or a live album. Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits, man. 1968. Got it for Christmas. Can you imagine? This one you see, uh, this is how old it is. You can see it's in stereo. And over here, playable on both mono and stereo. Original copy I got, well, my parents bought it for me. It was in mono. Had to send it back at the stereo version. They just didn't know the difference. I mean, my I don't come from a musical family. My parents never listened to records. We never had a record player in the house till I brought one in. Rarely would they even listen to the radio. They listened to the news, and that was about it. So they just didn't know. I mean, things were changing now. It was changing for a lot of people in music because we went from mono records to all of a sudden stereo. A few years later, we went to quadraphonic. Can you imagine four speakers? Didn't last long. Back to stereo was the, the standard. This one, 1968, by this time... Uh, Bob had put out quite a few albums. I got uh, seven of them on here. Then he had the motorcycle accident out of circulation. So his last album was Blonde on Blonde. From there on, there was a big gap before he came back. So all of the tunes on the album are taken from the albums prior to or including Blonde on Blonde. So at this point, we got the original Bob Dylan. We've got Freewheeling Bob Dylan. We've got uh, Times You Are Changing, another side of Bob Dylan. And then we started getting into the electric era of Bring It All Back Home, Highway 61 Revisited, and Blonde on Blonde. Actually, quite a few tunes off the Blonde on Blonde end and up on here. Here was the set list for the album. Uh, Rainy Day Women, Got Blown in the Wind, Time Zero Changing, It Ain't Me Babe, Like a Rolling Stone. Uh, I'm going to say that uh, Time Zero Changing and Like a Rolling Stone have been standards in a lot of the concerts that I've seen. Tambourine Man on here, Subterranean Homesick Blues. I Want You, Positively 4th Street, and Just Like a Woman. Now, everything that come off these first seven albums except Positively 4th Street. It appeared on here, but was not on any of the other albums that were released. So it was kind of a bonus at this point. Now, this was prior to the break. During the break, that was when he recorded those albums with uh, the band. He was priming up, brought out John Wesley Harding was the next return album. Kind of a return to form before things kind of went sideways and we hit into, you know, Nashville Skyline and uh, Self Portrait and those albums that to me really weren't what I listened to with Bob Dylan. When I got this, 1968, hadn't really heard a lot of him. He wasn't getting a lot of airplay on, on the radio. TV, I was familiar with a couple of his tunes with, through people like Peter, Paul, and Mary and uh, bands that, the birds that had been on shows like Ed Sullivan and that that actually played some of his tunes because they were covering uh, things like Tambourine Man and uh, Blown in the Wind and those kind of tunes. So I was familiar with those a bit, but not the Bob Dylan versions. So 68 was my first real exposure to him. I think the only time I heard him on radio, mid-60s, uh, I had a friend. And we were in grade five or six at this point. I remember going to his house, and his sister had a picture of Bob Dylan posted up in her room. And I remember being at my grandmother's one day, and on the radio they were doing Rainy Day Women's Song, which really never got a lot of airplay. That's the kind of thing you'd find on FM radio years later. But it was on whatever station they were listening to, and that was the first time I really actually heard him do a version of his tunes. I played this one, I don't know how many times. I'm surprised it still plays and it's not worn out. At that point, didn't have a lot of money to go out and buy albums. It was my first and probably the, the most played Bob Dylan album I've, I've got. I had it all through high school before I ended up buying a, a, buying a second one. But, I mean, I was a great fan of his music. Uh, I went back. Of course, we didn't have streaming then, so you had to find record stores and picked up the the second version of this, Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits 2, I had New, New Morning was probably one of my earlier purchases as well. Collabor or collaboration with uh, George Harrison back before the Wilbury days. Just all kinds of great stuff, but here's where it started. Go back, check it out. If you know Bob Dylan now, go back and see where he came from. I mean, this is where it really broke for him. This is when he became 
a household name where he became known for the protest songs where he built the legend, you know, that the Beatles and all those people kind of tried to emulate with what he was doing. He broke the rules. He went from two minute songs to songs that were four and five minutes long, maybe even longer, some of them with long stories and narratives. He really changed the face of music. So anyways, that's it for Wednesday. Check it out. Streaming networks, absolutely. Hard copies, yeah, you can still find them. And a friend of mine just picked up one of these on CD at the thrift store not too long ago. Still out there. Still able to purchase them online. So a great place to introduce yourself to the artistry, the writing, the poetry, the music, the vocals of Bob Dylan. Back when the voice was odd, but nothing like it is now, let me tell you. Anyways, he had a very distinctive style. Bob Dylan's Greatest Hits, my first Bob Dylan album. See you on Friday. Video Friday. We'll uh, be looking at another great band. Till then, everybody take care. Stay safe. Thanks for stopping by.